The Fantec 500 Caballero Rally is a bike that really has interested me because it has amazing potential to be quite a decent little off-road motorcycle if you're willing to risk those pretty pretty looks. And when I was taking the little 300L for a service recently, lo and behold one was sitting there in the dealership which is a rare thing these days to find any motorcycle on a dealership floor. So of course I had to take it for a test ride. So let's get into this review sort of not a review slash first impressions slash my audio failed on the GoPro so we're doing the best we can. So let's start with the basic specs and then I'll break it down into a little more detail in some subsections. We're talking about a single cylinder motorcycle here, it's 450cc's EFI liquid cooled pumping out 40 horsepower and 43 newton meters of torque. Bike has 200 millimeters of suspension travel front and rear and it also has adjustability for preload and dampening. It has Bybri brakes front and rear, which is a subsidiary of Brembo. The front is 320 millimeters and it's a single disc. It also has switchable ABS, a 1917 spoke wheel setup, an 860 millimeter seat height. It's 150 kilograms dry, which is pretty damn light for a street based motorcycle, but you factor in that 12 liter tank and other fluids. I would say that this is in the mid 160s as far as wet weight goes. And finally, the price of this bike is roughly $14,500 Australian. So let's talk about that motor. It's a single cylinder, 450cc, EFI, liquid cooled, 40 horsepower at 7,500 RPM and 43 newton meters of torque at 6,000 RPM. I hopped on it immediately thinking this was going to feel like a paint shaker, given the 450 dirt bikes I've ridden like the WR450F. And I've got to say this Fantic has the best of both worlds. It has the hooligan nature, that immediate power, thrill feeling of a 450 dirt bike. has the smoothness of a road bike so they've really made this bike quite smooth for a single cylinder. Of course this is nowhere near as smooth as a twin or a four cylinder bike but for a single cylinder I was really surprised. You've got enough power down low but it still has plenty to give you as you rev it up. So it was quite an engaging bike to ride. Quite a lot of great characteristics for commuting as well as for that off-road scenario if you were going to take it into the dirt. Let's talk about the looks of this bike, which are quite striking, and I really like the look of this bike. It really does capture attention. I love the aesthetics of this motorcycle. What I was expecting, though, was to see a lot of signs of cost cutting and cheaper components, but what this bike really does manage to do is look really high quality. Everything looks nice and machined well. All the parts look like they're meant to be there, well thought out, and quality components. It really is surprising how premium this bike manages to look. If you want something different, but off-road capable but looks fantastic at the same time man this Fantic 500 really hits the sweet spot as far as standing out goes Let's talk about comfort. As often, motorcycle manufacturers will sacrifice comfort for aesthetics, particularly in this scrambler market. But I'm happy to say that this is a surprisingly comfortable bike. I think that mostly comes from the fact that they've tried to keep that standard riding position, but also because of its off-road focus, it very much feels like a dual sport or an adventure bike or even an enduro bike in its upright seating position with a slight tilt forward. Your legs are at 90 degrees, so it is a very familiar place for the bars and nice and wide at that perfect height they're not too tall not too low the seat felt reasonably comfortable to me it didn't strike me as super comfortable or super uncomfortable but i did have quite a short time on this bike the jury is out whether on a long ride you'll get a numb bum from this bike The handling was another surprising feature. It feels very stable. I immediately felt confident enough to throw it into the corners and have a bit of fun. And this is a bike with knobby tires and taller suspension and it really doesn't suffer from either of those factors. It really does feel quite planted and flickable. I think this would be a really great little commuter bike. It really is quite engaging to ride even at the slower speeds. 
Up front, you've got 43 millimeter forks. You've got 200 millimeters of travel on both ends on this motorcycle. Again, this does have an off-road focus. You've also got fully adjustable settings for preload and dampening on this suspension. So you've got a fair amount of adjustability as well. And my impression was that the suspension is set up nicely. It is firm enough to take the big hit, but it will be plush enough that if you do go over a speed bump or hit a pothole, your fillings aren't gonna fall out of your face. We've got a 320 millimeter single front disc up front with a Bybury caliper on it. This is a subsidiary of Brembo if you're not aware, so it's basically Brembo's cheaper division. And I've got to say, I was really impressed with the brakes. This bike stops really, really well, especially considering it is a single disc, but it's got more than enough stopping power. I was really impressed and quite confident in the brakes in the short time that I had it. And it also has switchable ABS. For those people thinking of taking this into the dirt, you can turn the ABS off which is a double thumbs up from me everyone knows i love going off road these little peanut tanks they look really great on scramblers and make the aesthetics just look top notch but as far as actually off-road riding and turning this into some kind of subtle adventure bike that still looks fantastic 12 liters isn't going to cut it you're really not going to get very far at all so i would have loved to have seen that push to maybe 15 liters the switch gear for the indicator just makes no sense at all just so you know with the indicators on these you may manually have to turn them back to turn them off most bikes, you flick it to whichever direction you want the indicator to go, and then you just press it in and it cancels the indicator, not the Fantic 500 Rally. No, when you flick it on, you have to then flick it back into the middle setting for it to turn back off. So I found myself fiddling around, trying to turn it off and turning the indicators on both ways. It really isn't very intuitive at all. Not a deal breaker, but it certainly would get annoying. Another gripe that I have that really isn't unique to the Fantic 500 is the exhaust heat off this bike. It wasn't too extreme down near where my feet are on the pegs. That wasn't too bad. But what I did experience is quite a lot of heat coming off the rear exhaust pipes onto the back of my thigh. Now it's fairly cool here at the moment, at least for Australian standards, but it was cooking my leg a little bit. So I would be worried if you're riding this bike in summer, possibly getting some more free flowing aftermarket pipes would probably remedy that situation. But the other thing I didn't like as well, they kind of went with aesthetics over functionality with the exhaust guards. They really don't protect bags from sitting on the pipes. I had a bag slung across my shoulders and it sat on the pipe and the heat shield didn't keep it off the pipe and the final gripe i have is that this is a bike that really can do off-road riding if you wanted to but i just don't have the bank account or the willingness to take a bike that looks that good and ruin it off-road But I'd also love to point out that this bike in itself is already a great little adventure bike. Yes, it has a small tank. Carrying luggage might be a little bit challenging, but it really does have off-road chops while still being a great commuter as well. I'd be happy to ride this day to day to work and take it out off-road on the weekends if you can put up with ruining such a pretty bike off-road. So I'm giving this bike a double thumbs up. My only worry is you've got that Italian Chinese amalgamation there. Whether that is going to be a concern long term and whether you're going to always be able to find dealerships that will service the bike and be able to get parts easily is a question that's always going to be on the back of my mind but i think this really is a bike that i'm quite excited about it's so different it's in a niche of its own and it really does have the potential to be quite a great off-road motorcycle as well until next time don't forget to stay shiny side up and i'll see you in the next one catch you later